Do you have a map inside of your Roblox game, and you want to turn that map into a view model like this? Well look no further because this video is for you. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use this minimap module. This module has a lot of features such as waypoints and indicators for other players. And of course these indicators also account for rotation and position of the other player. And yes, this does work with more than two players as well. Now I don't really like the quote unquote tutorials where someone just posts a model and the whole tutorial is just downloading the model and using it in the game. Because the audience doesn't really learn how to make anything. They just learn how to import a model into their Roblox game. And while yes, this is pretty much the exact same thing, I will showcase a follow-up that shows exactly how this module works. So without further ado, this is your full guide to the minimap module. First thing you want to do is you want to go to the description and click the first link. Then you want to get the model off the asset store and then open up Roblox Studio. Once you're in Studio, you want to go over to your toolbox and you just want to import the map into your game. The first thing you'll probably notice is that this model includes a preset map. This map is basically an example of how you should structure your maps, because if you don't structure it in that way, the module will not work. Inside of the model, we have all of these different items. You want to delete these two items because those aren't needed. And then there's a script called README. This will include all the instructions for the module, but because you're watching this video, you won't need that, so you could just delete it too. Inside of your model, you should find three more models and they're all named after containers inside of the game. So what you wanna do is you wanna take that model, drag it into the specific container, and then hit Control U to ungroup it. So this one goes into starter GUI, so we just move it to starter GUI and ungroup it. And finally, starter player scripts, which is located inside starter player. And there we go. First thing you'll probably notice is the minimap in the corner. The GUI consists of this main canvas group here called circle. Now, you can change the name of this if you want, but if you do, there is an extra step that you have to do inside of the script, so I wouldn't really recommend doing that, but it is an option if that's what you prefer. I'd advise just to keep it the same name. Now, you can actually move this canvas group to wherever you want. Let's say you want it in the top right corner instead. You can just move it over, and it doesn't really matter. As long as it's only this that you're moving, then it should be fine. Inside here, I wouldn't really recommend messing with any of this stuff. And especially don't delete or rename any of it because the script heavily relies on it. You can however change the colors over here. Let's say you don't like the gray and you wanted the border to be some sort of gold. You can do that. Say you want to have something like that, that works fine. Or let's say you want to change the background, you can do that too inside of this BG frame. Or let's say you wanted it to be a square instead of a circle, you can do that as well. So these three things are the only thing you should really be messing with. Everything else, just leave it as it is. If you hit join, as you can see, give it a few seconds and there you go. You have your map, but this is actually the preset map. So what if you want to make your own custom map? Let's say we had our own map right here and we wanted to make a mini map for this map. Well, if you hit play, it won't work. So here's how you can make it work. Work. First, you need to add a folder into the workspace or really wherever your map is located. And I'd say name this to what your map is called. So in this case, my map is called my map. Now it's important to have three different folders in inside of your map. And you want to name these very specific things. First, you want to have a folder called floor. And this is where your floors are going to go and stuff like that. And then you want to have a folder called walls. And then your last folder needs to be called waypoints. All spelled like this and all with the first letter capitalized. So then you want to go over to your map and select all of your floor parts. So in this case, I only have one. And you want to drag it over into your floor folder. Then you want to select all of your walls and drag those over to your walls folder. Now what you need to do is you want to go to your main folder up here where your map is and you want to add a tag to it. Now if you have the example map loaded in, these tags should appear, but you want to click on the MM minimap tag and this basically tells the module that you want this map to appear on your minimap. So that's it, right? Well, if we join in, as you could see, the map doesn't appear and we get a warning in the output over here. Basically, you need a background for your map. Let's say you had a weirdly shaped map like this that isn't a perfect rectangle. This means that you'd likely have multiple floor parts inside of your map. The problem is the script works in a way where it sets the boundaries of the map. So basically, you need a part that spans the entire width of the map and it is a perfect rectangle. So as you can see, this example green part here spans the entire map and it's one single part. So it creates kind of a hitbox for the map. And this is important because this will be your background part. So basically, if you don't have one, just make a part that spans the entire map and that will be your background part. It's important to note that if the player isn't within this background part, the map will not show on the minimap. So every time the player walks off the 
So basically every time the player walks from here to here, then it will stop updating. And likely you want to make your background part transparent. Unless your floor is just one big part, then you could just use that. But yeah, if you if you don't want your background part to appear in the minimap, then just set the transparency to one. And you'd probably want to name your background part something unique to prevent confusion and so you know which one's which. You want to go to your background part and you want to insert another tag and the tag is going to be MM background. So once again, if you have your example map loaded in, it's just going to automatically appear. If not, you're going to have to type this in. And yes, you have to include the brackets as well. And this is pretty much it. So your map will appear, but let's say you're not happy with the, the scale. Let's say it's too zoomed in. So if you want to zoom out, all you have to do is you you go to your script inside of starter player scripts and then up here there are a few settings that you could change so this is going to be the directory of your ui now you don't really want to change this unless you rename the gui which i don't really recommend but if you ever feel like you want to rename the gui then just make sure to update this as well. This next one is going to be the name of the canvas group. So the canvas group here is called circle. If you don't like that name, you just want to call it background, then that's fine. But just make sure whatever you rename this to, you set this to that name. So let's say I rename it to background, then the script will not work unless I change this to background as well. Next we have our scale. So the units of the scale is studs per UI size. So what this means here we have 50 for example, and it will basically for every 50 studs in length that the map is, it will cover the background once. So the higher this number is, the more zoomed out your map will be, and the lower the number is, the more zoomed in the map will be. I think a good number here is anything between 100 and 200. So in this case, I'm probably going to change it to 150 even. And then over here is your smoothing. So if you notice, if you rotate your camera, the rotation is smoothed out. So if you want to change the smoothness, all you have to do is change this number. So the higher this number is, the less smooth it's going to be. So it goes up to 1. 1 is pretty much the least smooth it can get. As you can see, it rotates pretty much instantly. And the closer to 0 it is, the more smooth it is. But I don't recommend anything under 0 0.05 because it's just it just takes too long. Yeah, so as you could see, it doesn't really update as quickly because it's so smooth and so I don't recommend it if it's something you want you can add it in but it's not really advised and as you can see the movement of the player is just so like delayed because of it I usually keep it on 0.1 because I think that looks good so that's pretty much all of the script settings now let's say you wanted to add a waypoint to your map as you can see up here we have this blue waypoint. So how do you do this? Well, doing it is actually really, really easy. So you want to add in a new part, make sure it's anchored and set the size to 111. So it's a nice little cube that you can work with. And then you want to drag that to where you want your waypoint to be. So let's say we want our waypoint to be all the way down in this hallway and we want it to be in this location right here. So you move it over to your location and then you want to set the transparency all the way down because we don't want the player to be able to see that part. And we also don't want the player to be able to touch the part. So we just want to turn off can collide and can touch. And then you want to take your part and drag it into waypoints and name this to whatever you want. I'm just going to name it to my waypoint. And this part's important because if you hit play, you'll notice that it doesn't actually appear on the map yet. So to fix that, you have to go to your waypoint part and you want to scroll all the way down to attributes. And then you want to hit the plus button and add a new attribute. You want to make sure the type is string and name it to color exactly like this. And once you have this attribute, it will show up on the map. But let's say you want to change the color of the waypoint. So you don't want it to be red, you want it to be maybe some other color. So there are six current options to choose from and I will list all the different strings on the screen. So you have to type it in exactly like it is on screen in order for it to actually be that color. Anything else, it will just default to red. So your options for colors are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. So let's say I want mine to be green. I'm just going to set the color to green. And if we join in, and there we go, we have a green waypoint in that hallway. And you can add as many waypoints as you want. You can even fill up your map with waypoints. So yeah, it works. That should be pretty much everything you need to know for the minimap system. And this does work with multiple players. So as you can see, the player is facing that direction and the player's arrow, the purple one, points in that direction. And if we were to take this player and start spinning him around, as you can see, the left arrow updates to that rotation. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't currently work with multiple maps. 
So as you can see, we have two maps with all the different valleys and stuff like that, and the minimap is kind of broken. I think this is a bug in the code, but I am definitely going to be making an update and fixing it, so stay tuned for that in the future. So unfortunately, you do have to only use one map, but you could try to group all of your maps together. So I will make a follow-up video once I update the actual module, but if there's any changes that you want to see, let me know in the comments, and I will definitely take them into consideration and work on them. But currently, that's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully, you guys can make use of this inside of your game, and if you found this useful and you really feel like it, then subscribing would mean a lot because this took a while to make and it would be appreciated. So yeah, that is my minimap module. I hope you guys found this helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.